it's Nicole the Math Lady. Today we're looking at some geometric solids. Ooh, sounds intense. But really what we're going to be talking about are three-dimensional objects. Up until now we've been talking about mostly two-dimensional objects, right? Triangles, squares, rectangles, parallelograms. But now we're going to add a third dimension. Take a look at the board to see what I mean. So um, this is my first one I wanted to show you here. We call this a sphere. And you know of a sphere, right? It's a three-dimensional circle. You know a sphere is a basketball. Uh, any round ball is a sphere, okay? What about this one? We call that a cylinder. A cylinder. It's got a cylinder has two circles on the top and bottom, and really what's wrapped around it is a rectangle, is how it's joined. The last one, we have a circle on the bottom, and really it's a triangle that's wrapped around that circle. We call that a cone. So these three, a sphere, cylinder, and cone, are our geometric solids that have curved edges, right? They have a circle as part of their design. Let me introduce you to a few more shapes. These are all shapes that have flat surfaces, which means there are no curved angles in these shapes. We another name we have for them is called polyhedrons. Polyhedrons. So you might know this as a cube, right? It's based off of a square. Our next one is based off of a rectang rectangle, so we call it a rectangular prism. Okay, and then the next one is based off of a triangle. We call that a triangular prism. And the last one is based off of a triangle, and it has a, a base that's a square. We call that a pyramid. There's a few things to note about polyhedrons. There's three terms that we need to learn. The first one is the face. So the face is actually the flat surface, right? We call that the face. Um, that is really the base for that geometric solid. So the face of a cube is this square here, rectangular prism. It have a face here and a rectangle here. So any of the, the, the long sides, the planes, is what we call a face. We also have another term called the vertex and the vertex is any point on our rectangular prism call that the vertex the third thing is called the edge the edge or any of the lines that make up oop, our geometric solid so we have an edge a face and a vertex let's see if we can figure out how many edges faces and vertex vertexes, vertices, there we go, <laughs> our geometric solids have. Let's start with the cube. So how many, let's start with face. How many faces does a cube have? Well, we know it's got one, two, there's one on the back there, so there's four all the way around, but then there's two more on the top and bottom. So for face, this one has six. And what about the rectangular prism? One in the front, one in the back, and the same thing, there's four. So there are still also six uh, faces on a rectangular prism. What about a triangular prism? Well, its base is a three-sided triangle. So there's a face here and here, one, two, and then one, two, three. That's five. And for a pyramid, how many faces do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, and one on the bottom, which is five. What about vertices? Start with the cube. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertices. And rectangular prism, you can see it's gonna be the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Triangular prism, one, two, three, four, five, six. And a pyramid, we've got one, two, three, four, and one up on top. Okay, what about the edges? So edges of a cube, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we've got nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve for our cube. 
and you probably have realized there's a certain pattern going on here, we're going to have 12 as well for our rectangular prism. The only difference between the cube and the rectangular prism is that the sides of our cube are equal. So if we squished in our rectangular prism, so this side wasn't a rectangle, it was a square, it would be a cube. So we're going to have 12 edges. Triangular prism, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one up on top is nine. And what about our pyramid? One, two, three, four is back there, and then five, six, seven, eight. Woo! Okay, hope we got them all. Last term I want to introduce you to is one you've heard already, but it's a prism, and I want to explain what that means. If I were to take a knife and I was be able to cut right through my rectangular prism. When I cut that, I would still have a square on the front side of where I cut. So meaning the shape is constant throughout. So if I cut my cube, boom, that would also have the same shape. Same thing with my triangular prism. Now what about my pyramid? If I cut my pyramid off this way and then cut it two inches lower, they would not be the same, would not be constant throughout. So these are prisms and our pyramid is not. The last concept I want to introduce you to is just what's called surface area. Well, you've learned area. Remember when we had just a two-dimensional square, the area was the space filled in the plane of the square. And you might remember that the area, the formula was a side times side or a length times width, which was always the same, right? So if we have a three inches as our side. We know the area was going to be three times three, and that would give us nine inches squared for just our square. But now we have a cube. So we talk about surface area. We're talking about what is the area of all of the surfaces? Well, essentially, we're talking about all of the faces. And do you remember, how many faces did we have to our cube? Well, we had one on the front, one on the back, and then one on each side, which adds up to a total of six faces. So to find the surface area, we are going to multiply six, which is our number of faces, times the area of one square, which is nine inches. Nine times six is 54 inches, and it's still going to be squared as our label. Okay, that's it. I've shown you a whole bunch of stuff. Definitely do the practice problems. We're going to put it all together to have you synthesize all of this information. Okay, that's it for me today. It's Nicole the Math Lady. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.